Hey, it's colleague Glover here, and um, today I want to show you something that I think is uh, kind of cool because um, it's one of those little subtle things. Until I point it out to you, I'm sure you won't notice it. There's a lot of little things that go on when you're trying to put together your song and mix it and make all the elements work and everything. And there's some things that may never get heard or noticed, but they make a huge difference when it's um, injected into the song, um, something that may not have existed before, but it just kind of helps with the overall vibe and flavor and feel of the song. So I want to show you something. This is a song that um, we previously worked on. It's called Good Enough, and I use this as a uh, demonstration song for a few other things that we did inside of Mixing Academy. But I want to uh, break this one part down to you because um, it's doing something very subtle, but I think it's very, um, a very good teaching point for you to know that when you do little stuff like this, it really keeps stacking on the uh, power and interest and movement and all kinds of things that go in your song. So let me play this song. I'm going to play it from the second verse through the uh, second chorus, and then I'm going to stop it, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about, okay? Don't give up your dream, even when it seems that there is no end To all the sacrifices you must make Stand the tide and tide, running deep inside song. and you will find The path to lead you to your destiny When everything you do, it don't seem good enough and every word you say don't mean a thing When every step you take you just keep falling down Get back up on your feet because you're good enough Good enough because you're good enough Oh, you're good enough Okay <clears throat> So that's good enough for you to kind of get the idea of what's going on with that. But I want to direct you to something that um, I did. This song keeps building into it and everything. But I got some little subtle things that are building and helping inside of here. So uh, let me do this real quick. Uh, I'm going to go to just this, uh, the chorus here. Good enough. Good enough. And what I'm going to do. Because you're good enough. I'm going to mute the mute. Let me mute the uh, vocal. So you can hear the organ and piano, guitars, and and um, so what I want to do now <clears throat> is I want to draw your attention to the guitar. Because there's an acoustic guitar playing the thing, and then the organ and the piano and everything. So, um, you know, while this song has strings and stuff like that later on in the song, in this particular thing, which is a chorus, there's some other things going on, and later it has a beat come in. So I wanted to do something subliminally to enhance that, but still not take away, you know, the main, the key star players are the organ and the the uh, piano you know and well the organ and the guitar rather with the strumming and the piano is just kind of blending with the organ and everything so those two things are kind of you know that keyboards and then guitar get that whole thing that ding 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 ding, ding, ding. so we got the guitar here so i want you to listen i put an effect on the guitar to help it blend in with the organ. And let me tell you what I basically did. Basically, I created a synthesizer out of the guitar to blend in with the organ. So that, so that it fills up the chords in the back and everything. And it has a little rhythm, a, a rhythmic uh, element to it as well. Um, I'm gonna explain to you what I did, but just take a listen for a second. Now listen to all that high stuff in the back going afterwards. Now what I did was, let me explain what I did. I put um, Sound Toys, uh, and I'm going to show you this, because this is, Sound Toys is one of my favorite companies, 
And let me show you how I built a synthesizer out of a guitar with the Sound Toys effects rack by combining a few different things, you know. So um, one of the things, I just, I just suggested this to another client previously when we were doing some mentoring sessions. Um, I told him to put on um, the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the Crystal Echoes uh, thing on, um, on something. And um, he was just saying that I can never figure out how or where I would use that. It just seems so weird and everything. Well, this is a case where I'm using this too because um, it just fit for this song, what I'm doing. Now, let me explain what I'm doing. This guitar here, and let me open up first of all. This is the Sound Toys effects rack. I'm going to open that up. Okay, so we've got the effects rack here, and um, the effects rack over there, that way. <laughs> uh, the effects rack, uh, you can put any kind of combination that you want and everything in here. So uh, basically, I've got the uh, Sound Toys Crystallizer on there. I've got Echo Boy. I've got uh, Primal Tap down here. And then I've got their uh, Psy Q on here, okay? So let me explain what I'm doing, because my thought process is when I heard the guitar and he's doing the um, he's doing the stroking and everything, I'm like, you know, it'd be nice to have an effect back there that as he's stroking, it kind of laid back there, and I can imagine the crystal uh, echoes thing going on in the back with the crystallizer. So um, when he's doing it, I can imagine them uh, hanging out over and sounding like a synthesizer in the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you kind of hear what I'm doing here and then I'll show you how I build it and, and um, you can see how you can use something weird like this that sometimes you can't think of where would I use something like this and the, the whole key for this is to have this guitar blend and enhance the chordal structure mainly to blend with the organ so the guitar almost sounds like another organ so ch check it out let's play it here and... so let me here's the guitar drag So drive by itself, nice guitar sound, everything, but just kind of ordinary and boring. So I, I put the, and this is what I'm putting in there. And actually, So what I did was I'm blending this back so I could hear the guitar. Because I just wanted that to be kind of in the back and come afterwards. So what's happening? Hear it high bloom. So that blends with the organ. <coughs> okay, so, um, excuse me while I cough for a second. Sorry about that. So um, you see, suddenly you never would notice that was going on back there with all with the organ and all that stuff going on. But it's just to play with the groove a little bit back there. You know, I could have left it and just, you know, put ordinary reverb or something like that and let it go on. But I wanted that little extra to play with the groove back there, you know. So that's what that's doing. So you hear that? Here's the effect all the way. Okay, so let's talk about how I thought about building this, okay? I, uh, you know, the crystallizer by itself is a weird kind of effect, okay? So let me... um solo this for you and um, 
let's just put this on here and uh, we'll put it on a hundred percent mix so you can hear what's let me take the mix that's without so do you hear the little warp you hear the little warbling sound that it's adding now I could have done because here's a here's a gate control let me in fact let me um, um let me zoom this in so you can see it's more so we got this gate control this is how I control where the groove was because you can have it ducking or you can open it up you hear the warbling I didn't want it to be super obvious, so you know I got I got it kind of in there a little more subtly, and then um, check this out over here. This is how it's releasing. Watch it. It's ducking back. See how it's ducking, ducking up. Watch it go back up. So that's how I wanted to trigger it to get that little in, them little in between beats in there, has, setting that to trigger like that. Okay, but that's just the first part. So um, we've got that going through there, and um, then coming out of that, I needed okay it, by itself. It's like okay, I hear the little high pitch things and all that, but I wanted to um, take it through something and 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 transform it into something else now i've got two echoes here i've got this echo boy and i've got this primal tap so what i'm going to do is turn off um let me let me just do this bypass this one and bypass this one because here's where the craziness comes this primal uh this primal tap is what's um going crazy and stretching this whole thing okay i want you to notice one thing that i have on here on this primal tap the feedback I've got it up very high. You know, the, both feedbacks here on this primal tap are up very, very high, okay? So um, it's going to make, when anything that feeds in there is going to keep feeding back and, and, and oscillating and taking off and everything. So um, <clears throat> I'll let you hear what that sounds like and then I'll pull it down so you can kind of hear what the basic delay is going. See, it's taking off, oscillating. Now let me pull this down. See now it's not oscillating as much. It's still oscillating a little bit because of some of the other settings I have. But you can hear how the delay is kind of in there. But feeding. So you know feeding into that. Okay so that gave me the rhythm that I want and the feedback gives me the stretch that I want. But I needed it not to be so just all over the place washing out. So what came in front of it, and what's controlling it, is this uh, Echo Boy right here that's in front of it. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to play it, and then I'm going to kick this in and you'll, you'll watch. And I, wanna, I want you to look at some of the controls here. This Echo Boy, I shaped it and everything, and now we, we've got a 100% mix here, but I can pull this back and blend in some of the the things that are previously coming in like um i can mix it and give a little bit more of the other thing do different combinations but and i'm not going to do this i can shape how the stuff that's going in here comes in how it decays out i can uh, take how many repeats are happening here and everything so i'm going to show you what all that does real quick because that's where i mainly build it you know okay so um let me turn it off first so you hear all the oscillating and everything I want it to be controlled a little bit more before it gets into this because that's part of that is coming from um, being fed by uh... Let me do this So when I turn this on it, it's, uh, it, it's not taking off as crazily and everything because of some of the way I have this set If I turn this uh, these repeats down See, but I want that to repeat and stretch that sound out. See, that's giving me that, that little extra rope. So that's amplifying that thing that I had set up before with the uh, crystallizer. And then the shape here, 
and I'm, I'm, I'm taking off a little bit of the lows and everything, but the shape here is where it really gets in because see, um, this part here, I can deal with, see if I take that down here and make it a quick slope, not as much. And if I take it all the way up here, it just stays all up. That's not what I want either. I want it to shape and come down. See, now that's fitting in the groove. Okay, all right. So that's one part of it there. And um, you know, I can mess with some of the other things too. If I turn down the, turn the mix down for a minute. See, that's what we're hearing the, 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 the thing that's in front of this and getting more of the dry thing and all that. We don't want that. I want it to be all this, have this, all of this process here. I don't need any extra feedback because I think it's okay. Um, I cut off a little bit of lows, but I'm leaving a little bit of highs. But if I wanted to dull that down a bit to contain it a bit, I could do that with as well. I don't mind that stuff coming through. Okay, but anyway, let's talk about uh, reactivating this again, too. Now, did you hear the high frequency stuff come in there, the little high oscillators from the crystallizer? Uh, we got this pitch thing here, this 1,200 cents uh, an octave higher, you know. So if I take this mix control, that's just where the guitar normally is. And this is the octave higher we're hearing. Recycle and stuff like that. The, it gets a little crazier. I don't need all that weirdness though. So I'm not using the recycle, I'll just turn that off. The gate, like I said, that controls. The, the gate ducks it out or gates it. Let me turn that off. And then down here I have the um, PsyQ. This is just, I'm just using this to kind of shape it and pull out some of the mids and stuff like that a little bit more. Um, so the PsyQ is the last part of the chain. It's just kind of giving me uh, some of the tones of frequencies I want. But, um, you know, and if I play with the repeats on here again, check it out. So I can totally dial this, this in where I want now. It's lasting a little bit too long there, all the way open. A little too short, but once I get above eight, nine, ten, I like eleven. Because it still lets me hear the guitar nice and the strum of the guitar clearly, but I hear that effect back there. But then what happens is when I put it in with everybody, it's just blending in with the organ. So right now it's just blending in with the organ, but what's happening is, is it's subliminally lifting the chorus like I want it to be, you know. It's giving that little extra thing in there. So even though it sounds like it's just guitar and um, organ and piano, it's actually a, a, synth, a fourth instrument, a synth in there that's, that's kind of adding to there. And it's all adding on the back end. So when everybody's playing on the downbeat, that's coming in on the upbeats in the back end and filling it in and stretching it out, playing with a rhythm subliminally that you may, you know, you won't notice that unless it's pointed out to you. Little things like that, if you take that extra time to build stuff in and, and enhance certain things that, um, you know, even going weird. This is one of the things I do in my Effects Magic course, for example. In Effects Magic, I previously showed you guys how in one song, I took a song, I took a song that was a gospel and inspirational song, and so 
it made me want to take people towards God as far as sound sonically or feel like you were being protected by God or Jesus or, you know, whatever you believe. I wanted you to think of that higher power just from the sound. So I bent the room, the atmosphere and everything that was going on to make it feel like you were being pulled to or cradled back and drawn back into, you know, into safety or whatever. You know, that was just my concept of it. This is what um, I like to do within like um, things like effects magic or whatever. But but uh, I wanted to include this into, into um, Mixing Academy for you as just uh, another insight to my thought process. Because these are little things that you'll probably never notice unless, like I said, it's pointed out because it's meant to blend in with the other things. So it's not going to be a stark thing that you'll notice. But the difference is, is like we have piano, organ, and then something else that makes the chorus a little bit bigger. That was my goal, to make the chorus a little bit bigger. Now, I have other things going on, too, that help that process as well. But this is one thing that I thought that would be good because it, it not only makes it bigger, but it also makes it more rhythmic as well. So those two things, I think, um, just think differently in, about how you can do stuff like this with your uh, music. Anyway, this is Khalid Glover, also known as ColecoVision. And... Um, while it's still open, I decided to leave open the uh, free silver membership to Mixing Academy. So you can go ahead and claim your free silver membership right now to Mixing Academy. Go to mixingacademy.com and uh, go ahead and get in now while it's still open. Okay, I'll catch you later on the next one. Bye.